Why is land that will grow 80 different crops of commercial significance, why is that land worth $10,000 an acre and the same land, if you're gonna put a Krispy Kreme or a McDonald's on it, is worth a million dollars an acre? One of the biggest hurdles to anybody who's trying to farm close to cities is just land prices are really high. Being able to sell to cities and urban areas was critical to our success. It's basically where we've sold all of our produce. We were very lucky to get the amount of land we got this close to a, to a city. Having access to a farm incubator like this has been so important. They provide us access to both land, but also access to infrastructure. A lot of farming involves big investments, and we have to rely on the incubator to make those big investments. Farming close to an urban area, your labor is higher, your expenses are higher. I think it's almost cheaper to become a doctor than to become a farmer. I bet on that. So we started this with $700, basically. We started um, growing on a half acre, um, and we expanded to uh, one acre of production. The constraints of farming on an acre are definitely pretty profound. I think the biggest challenge for farms like mine that have been bigger is just, it's intimidating to have to learn something completely different. It's just a paradigm shift. Sometimes, you know, bigger is smaller. There's a lot more opportunities to sell directly to consumers, vegetables, fruit, um, you pick operations. We're within 60 miles of 5 million people. Within those parameters, you're constantly adapting and learning to change. We try to differentiate ourselves in any markets that we're in. We cannot compete with the commodity markets. We realized among the six of us, virtually all of us had been in that position. Financially, we were just almost broke. And we jumped onto direct marketing because we could see the potential. We've got all these people that want food. And so we can get into this and we can survive. You know, being close to the city also means that, that folks can visit you. And so um, being able to monetize some of that uh, is a way, I think, that, um, that farmers, uh, especially close to the city, are going to have to go in, in order to make those higher costs. Growing up as a child in the city, my only view, vision of farming was really just giant acres, fields of golden wheat um, on commercials and I guess country music. For it coming into the Black Farmers Collective, I never really thought that I would be able to really 100% be a farmer um, while living in the city. It goes both ways. I think ultimately, you know, it's important to stay close um, and to expose people to what it really is to have a local food system. You know, for years he fought with them over like spraying manure and stuff that they didn't like. And we do so many great things, but there again, we don't talk enough and the people that are coming out with these new regulations don't really do the deep dive and find out, okay, so how's this gonna affect this person? I think it's very important for uh, community governments to understand the value of this community agriculture and to really push against development pressure. I think telling that story and like connecting with people about what's really going on is just, it's kind of just too much. Like you can't really, it's like where to even begin to talk about what it means to organize your life around natural systems rather than a nine to five and a commute.